Alright, so this video is going to be about uh, basic situations where things aren't accelerating, making force diagrams, and then using those force diagrams to write a set of equations that you can solve, kind of like we did in class. So this first page we did in class, so I'm just going to fill in uh, the diagrams and the equations and talk about them real quick. Okay, so real quick for the first one, uh, it's just the mass hanging from the string. Right, so all you have is two forces, you have Fg and Ft. So when you write your equation, uh, the net force is zero because it's not accelerating. Right, so that's equal to those two forces subtracting from each other. So tension minus Fg, because tension is going up and Fg is pulling down. So you set them opposite, T minus G gives you zero because they have to be balanced. Same thing with the second one, except now there's an extra force pushing up, right? There's two tensions. So when I write my equation, it's still, oops, I forgot the zero. It's still equal to zero, right? But now there's two pulling up, and then Fg is going down. So it's Ft1 plus Ft2 minus Fg, which is going down. And then the third one is there's two situations. So there's the bottom ball and the top ball. So the bottom ball, we said there's Fg pulling down, and then there's the little rope in the middle pulling up. So my equation for the bottom ball would be 0, because it's not accelerating, equals T1 pulling up minus Fg pulling down. And then on the top ball, it's the same thing. There's an upward force from the top rope. And then there's the Fg of the 7 kilogram ball, but then there's also this tension and this rope pulling down right here. So the equation is, this, whoops, I forgot to put the zero again. This equals zero. Zero equals Ft2, the upwards force, minus Ft1, which is this bottom rope down here pulling down, minus Fg. That gives you zero. Okay, so for this one, uh, the cable and the anchor holding up the bridge, my force diagram should look like this. I should have Fg pointing down. I have a frictional force keeping the whole thing in place. I have this force right here pointing up at an angle, so i got to break that into components. So some of it is going to be this piece, and some of it is going to be this piece. So I know if my angle is right here, that this one will be the cosine component, and this one will be the sine component. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those in. This one will be, I'll call that Ft cosine my angle. And then I'll have an upwards one that's going to be Ft times the sine of my angle. And then I'm also missing a normal force, right? So the ground is pushing back up to support everything, so I would have to throw in a normal force too. So that's terrible, but you get the idea. So writing my equation, I'm going to do the y direction first. So if you look in the y direction, I got three of them. So net force in the y direction is zero and that's equal to I'll take my ups and I'll subtract my down so that'll equal Ft sine theta plus Fn minus Fg and that's my y equation. And then my x equation, still zero because it's not accelerating, will be this way. So there's only two of them. There's the cosine component and there's friction. So this will be FF minus FT cosine theta. Right. 
Alright, so I'm going to skip 5 and just jump to 6 because 5 and 6 are basically the same thing. Right, so I'm going to draw my diagram. I'm just going to draw it over here on the elephant right here. So I have a normal force from the ramp pushing the elephant up. I have friction keeping the elephant from sliding down the ramp. And then I have this is the way gravity acts right here, right? But because it's on a ramp, we're going to split gravity into components. So I'm going to have a component pushing down and a component pushing this way. And so if you remember, we talked about if you have anything on a ramp at some angle, then that object, the gravitational force gets split into Fg cosine of the angle and Fg sine of the angle where the sine component is always up here going parallel to the ramp and the cosine component is always here going perpendicular to the ramp. So coming back over here and filling these in this is going to be Fg sine theta and the one down here will be Fg cosine theta. Alright, so this is what my equations would look like. I already filled those in, so let's look at those. In my y dimension, I have these two forces. Right? So, because the elephant is standing on the ramp, it's not accelerating up and down the ramp, and it's not accelerating into or out of the ramp. So, everything's going to be zero. So in the y direction, zero is going to equal fn minus fg cosine theta. You could have written the other way because this is basically saying they're going to equal each other. And then in the x dimension, going parallel to the ramp, zero, which is my net force because it's not accelerating, is equal to the frictional force minus fg sine theta. So this one minus this one. Alright, so here's one we're going to solve going all the way through. We're going to draw the diagram we're going to write the equations, and then we're going to solve for all the different forces. Okay, so here's the forces I have. I have, obviously, gravity pulling straight down. I have this thing back here pulling on his, what is that, his loincloth pulling backwards, right? So it's like acting like a tension. And then there's the vine pulling this way, okay? But, because remember, I need things to be in my xy coordinate system, right? This tension 2 isn't xy, so I need to break it into sine and cosine, so it needs to look like this. So what I did was broke this into a cosine and a sine, right? And this one is cosine because my angle is being measured from the vertical, right? So if this is my angle then that means the adjacent side is going to be the y, not the x like you're normally thinking. So down here, if I make my little triangle right here, this one in the x direction is actually going to be the sine component. So this is what my force diagram should look like. So drawing the quality marks, right, because it says that makes your life a little bit easier. That's what it should look like. So I know this one and this one are equal, that one and that one are equal. Okay, so an equation for the vertical forces, which would be the net force in the y direction. We know it's zero, so it's going to be my two y's, but subtract them because they're opposite. So Ft1 cosine 40 minus Fg equals zero. And then for the next one, my equation in the x direction, the horizontal direction, same thing, the net force is zero. And now I'm going to do my two x dimension forces. So that would be Ft1 sine of 40 minus Ft2. I mislabeled this one up here, it should be Ft2. Okay. Alright, so now we'll go through and solve the rest of this. Alright, so we know the mass is 75 kilograms, and we want to figure out the weight. So we know weight, which is Fg, 
is mass times g, and g is about 10 newtons per kilogram. So the actual one is 9.8, right? But we've said that if you can solve it with 10, you can solve it with 9.8, right? So when we're doing problems like practice stuff like this, it's just as good to use 10. Because if you can do it with 10, you can do it with 9.8. So we would take 75, which is the mass, times g, which is 10 newtons per kilogram, and that gives us 750 newtons. All right, so for this next one, we're trying to figure out, using the appropriate equation for the forces on him, to determine the tension in the vine. And the tension in the vine, as you know, is this one right here. So remember, we split it up into tension sine 40 and tension cosine 40. So it doesn't matter which one we solve for if we get the cosine one or the sine one. No matter what, if we solve for one of these two, we can just solve for FT, right? So I know that FT1 cosine 40 is equal to FG, right, from these two equations. I know that FG, the weight, is equal to this, and I know the little rope pulling back is equal to this one. Well, in both cases, I have FT, so I can solve whichever one that I know the other unknown. And in this case, my Y equation has FG, which I already know. So if I plug in FG, I can solve this equation for that. So that's going to look like this. So here's my original equation. 0 equals Ft cosine 40 minus Fg. So I can add the Fg over to the other side to give me Fg equals Ft cosine 40. And now if I have this equation, but I want Ft, cosine 40 is just a number, right? The product, it's, it's actually not even a product, it's just a ratio. So I can divide this over to leave me with Ft. So that looks like this. Right, so solving for all that, uh, Fg we said was 750, and the cosine of 40 is 0.76. So if I do 750 over 0.76, that leaves me with 986 newtons. So the tension in this rope right here is 900 something newtons, which makes sense because if there's 750 pulling down, that means the hypotenuse of these two has to be greater than 750, right? It couldn't just be 750 because then there wouldn't be an angle. So that's the answer for the tension in the vine. All right, so for the last one, you want the tension in the loincloth, which is this one pulling back. So that's got to be equal to the sine component. So here's my equation. This is just the x equation that I wrote up here in C. So rearranging it, I can add ft2 to the other side to give me ft2 equals ft1 times sine 40 and then I know ft1 is already 986 so all it is is 986 times the sine of 40 and the sine of 40 is 0.64 so that means that 986 times 0.64 gives me 634 newtons which is pulling back right? And that is pretty much the basic process for setting up and solving these equations. There, If you can draw the force diagram, you can solve the equation. Everything else after that is pretty simple. Okay, so I'm going to leave 8 alone if you want to practice. And uh, you can check the answers with me sometime. That's it. Okay.